Thanks, Ashish. So the answer is obviously um, VI, right? But um, the reason I'm showing VS Code is that some people have been working on some nice tooling in the um, for writing Zeek scripts, basically. And um, I was wondering how to make that more accessible to more people. And I think VS Code is a nice vehicle for that. And I built like a small playground to showcase that. And then let's take that for a ride, right? So I'm inside VS Code. I'm running on Mac OS here at the moment. And um, let's just get some random code from the internet that I have written. All right, let's clone that repo. Sounds good. Right, so there's some repo and um, what this repo contains is basically set up to run stuff inside a defined environment. And there's a standard for that from, I think it comes from, from um, the Visual Studio Code people actually. And so we define some container here that defines some work environment. And um, so there's like a Docker file we have, and then we can install some extension for VS Code, set some settings. That Docker file is just a Docker file, right? So what this does, it pulls down some base image that has some VS Code stuff in it, and then installs Zeek in that image and installs some other tool, Zeek script, for example, right? So let's install that extension. So that's a recommendation I, I triggered here, right? So let's download that extension, install it, and this extension will actually interpret that data. And when I click reopen container, should start up. Um, um, build a container in the background, so that's cached now, and um, then bind mount on my macOS host my um, local clone into that repo and let me work in that, right? So now it's downloading some server binary, okay. Okay, so now I'm, I'm, on, I'm still in the same editor here and um, I'm running inside a Alpine machine now. I mean, okay, it says Alpine, but this is a Debian host system actually. So I'm running Linux at the moment, and if you would do the same what I just did in on Windows, for example, it would ask you to install Docker. If you don't have Docker, set up Docker, and you would have the same process. We are completely decoupled from the host system, right? So we have like a nice environment here. And we have a Zeek script here, and you see syntax highlighting. So there's a VS Code extension for, there was an existing extension for syntax highlighting in VS Code, and um, recently contributed, um, Bu Peng Zhao, he updated um, that, and we have a different extension which comes with more stuff. So, but let's just see. So we can run Zeek stuff here, right? Yep, we can run Zeek stuff. Okay, so let's look into this VS Code integration we have here. So we, you see that we have syntax highlighting, like I mentioned. See some outline, for example, here. So we have like an event handler defined for Zeek in it. And um, what else do we have? So I can. Let's do some, something exciting maybe. Let's write some, some event handler for some other event, right? So let's write an event handler for DNS reply, for example, right? So we see, so this thing has hooks into Zeek. It parses the um, nice metadata that in the doc comments basically. And then we can look at this documentation for that and it generates like some stats up fast here. So we're, we just have added an event handler and let's implement it like in some, Semi awesome way. So we get some parameters, for example, ans, that parameter here, right? So this is a DNS answer that has a lot of fields. Let's print the type of the answer and the query, maybe, and what answer we get, right? So is this, oops, so just reformatted the code. So we have Zeek format in here, a tool that um, can pass Z code and then output formatted Z code. So it puts like the Curly's on the right place and the tabs, so you don't, so I don't have to remember it. I mean, I can't remember that. So is this awesome enough for a demo? Maybe not, right? So we should maybe print like pros here with format. Let's use format. So save that. Looks good, right? Nope. There's some problem here. Okay, I need format string to be a, str a format string here as first argument. Okay, so that's in the docs, I guess. Yes, printf. So how do I actually print this stuff now, right? So I need a percent and then I want to print some string, ah, an S. Okay, I have three, three things I want to print as strings here. So this is maybe awesome enough now for a demo. Maybe it's not, right? So let's look at this field again. So this is a count, which is kind of nasty. 
So let's, I mean, we can of course click on this field here and then it opens up where this field is defined, right? So it's some count and then there's some comment above. Okay, there's a to do here that we should use an enum, okay, because we can print enums, but it's just a count. So maybe let's implement some function that does this for us. Okay, more stuff. So there's a snippet for a function. I don't have to remember where I put my return type. Good. Let's implement some function that converts some type count to a string, right? And then in here, it, I guess, would have some switch statement, right? Okay, don't need to write that either. And then let's just handle that answer, for example, right? So this is this field over here. If we see that, let's just return that as a string. So I have a Vim plugin installed here, but that's okay. And for anything else, maybe just return something lazy for now, right? So this is this awesome enough. Now let's use it. And then we call that function here, right? Okay, so we did, didn't put a doc string here, so we don't see a doc string. If I would put like, oops, if I would put a doc string here. I would, of course, get some information on that. So is this awesome enough for demo? Maybe not. So um, Fatma, she mentioned, let me close this here. So Fatma mentioned that you can like dump, so she said that there's like something to dump events, but I don't really recall how that is called. So let's see if we can load, ah, there's a policy miss dump events here, which is nice. So if we click here on this, it takes us to this file. And it shows me that I can set, so this is, it dumps events if I raise something, uh, it, it dumps any events to standard output in readable format. I like that. And it has some options. Maybe let's make this less verbose because, oops, sorry. Um, let's just, um, let's not include arguments, right? So this is, if true, include all event arguments and output. That will be very noisy because I get like past a connection down here. And let's also maybe only print that for the stuff I care about, right? So that reply string maybe. Okay, save. Oops, now it's formatted nicely again. So this is maybe awesome enough now for my demo, right? Let's run this. Um, of course, this is like a full Docker container. And it, um, at least on my machine, I have some interface here. I, I hope anybody has some interface. So let's just start up listening on that interface and um, see if that actually works here. Okay, we're listening and now we can, so this should hopefully do some DNS thing, right? Yep, so we get the, the debug logging here and we get the printout from the script, right? And um, so I showed you multiple tools interacting here. So we have like a VS Code extension. Well, no, so I don't know why it installed C-sharp actually, but this is the extension I, I care about, which brings you the com completion, which is kind of not fully there, but useful already. And it brings you um, formatting via Zeek format by Christian, syntax highlighting by Hupeng, Snippets I showed you, and you can also publish to try.seek.org. Actually, let me try that. So I'm here, and then I can say, okay, if I would and press enter now, it would post that to seek.org, so can, I can share it with somebody else and open that in my browser. Yeah, but you can see my browser because I don't share my browser window with you. And um, it's also doing this, this um, IntelliSense um, component also does indexing, for example, right? So if I can, I can, for example, go to a symbol in the workspace, right? So let's, and that's, let's see what stuff is for JSON. There's like symbols that contain JSON, or do I have something for what kind of HTTP stuff? I have like lots of events here. There's some globals here I can set and a bunch of types. And I can basically discover um, Z code that way I can, open that file and then I can keep on exp 
exploring here, right? So this opens other files I could open, opens types. This is just the normal documentation that people, that developers basically write when they write Z code. And we can just surface this here, right? And um, did I miss something? Let me check. Right, so this is a VS Code extension. It bundles um, a small language server underneath that you can, of course, use in Vim, like I do. And But maybe you want to try something like this to play around on some random machine and show people Zeek or play with Zeek yourself. All right, that's basically my demo. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Benjamin. You know, we the Microsoft virtual talks went so well, we figured we would just, you know, do it one more time and three times a charm. Thank goodness. It's good to see you. I know you can't see it, see us, but it's great to see you. Um, questions for Benjamin? There are people in the room, I promise you, besides. Yeah, just, just like join us in the tooling channel in Zeek Slack, and we all care about um, awesome tooling there. 